In this video, we are going to scrape the names of all the characters in the Witcher book series from the Witcher Wiki website. I'll show you how to use the Selenium library for data scraping. As a side note, this video is a warm-up video for a larger data portfolio project, so if you want to follow along, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. This whole project is about extracting the relationships between characters in the Witcher book series using NLP, and after that, we'll apply some network analytics to transform thousands of pages into an interactive network graph to help us better understand the dynamics between the characters. You might as well just go ahead and watch the Netflix series to roughly know all of this, but well, we are data nerds, so… If we go to the website and look at the characters in the books page, you'll see a bunch of books here. On the page for each book, there's a list of all the characters that appear in the book. Our task is to extract the names of all the characters in those books using Selenium. At the end of the video, we'll have a list that looks like this for the next step of our project, which is to extract the relationships among the characters in the books. But you might be thinking, wait, hold on, why are we using Selenium instead of Scrappy or Beautiful Soup? I heard that they could be used for data scraping as well. You're absolutely right. They can all be used for the same purpose. They can even be used in combination with each other to optimize the scraping process because they all have pros and cons. Selenium, funnily enough, it is not actually a web scraping library. It can do web scraping but it's actually a browser automation library. It is used to automate tasks that you may do as humans on a website, like opening a browser, moving the mouse, and clicking the button, or doing some dance moves, yet to be tested. So Selenium is great for scraping dynamic web pages that use JavaScript to serve content. That means some of the data on the web page might be tucked away by JavaScript. Examples are sites that have a see more or next button, or you have to scroll down to see more data, or you have to input some data in a form to be able to see more data. Selenium can interact with all of these elements and help you get the data out. You might notice that the URL might not change upon those actions, so other libraries that can only get the data through the URLs would struggle in this case. One of the downsides of Selenium is that the data size that it can handle is more limited than Scrappy, for example. Moving on to Scrappy. Scrappy is not even a library. It is a complete web scraping framework, so it can be used to build a complete spider that can crawl through entire websites in a very systematic way. It is very powerful, very fast, and can handle a large amount of data. So for serious and big web scraping projects, you will definitely want to use Scrapy. To handle dynamic web pages, you can also insert Selenium in the parser of the Scrapy spider to automate the clicking and scrolling, etc. And this way, you have the best of both worlds. However, Scrapy is not really beginner friendly, and it is more suited for advanced users. Beautiful Soup, on the other hand, is a parsing library, so it is really not a complete web scraping library, although we use usually refer to it as such. There are two steps for scraping data, firstly to get the data from a website, and then to parse it and save the output. Beautiful Soup only does the second bit. To actually pull the data from a website, you will need requests or other libraries. Beautiful Soup can automatically detect the structures in HTML and XML documents and find what you need. For example, with this simple line of code, you can find all the links from a web page content. Pretty easy, right? So it is a perfect library for small projects and for beginners who are still learning web scraping. The downside is that it can be a bit slow and have quite a few Few dependencies. This web scraping project is quite small and simple, so I use Selenium, which I think is a bit more fun. You can use the same concepts we'll be talking about today to build an Instagram bot or anything you want to automate on your browser. So it is a very much worth learning library. A scrapy project might be for a larger web scraping project in the future. Now let's get started. All right, let's scrape some data. First of all, let's create a new project folder named Witcher project. And let's create a virtual environment for this project because we are going to install quite some new libraries here and I don't want to mix it up with other projects. And now let's go ahead and install some necessary libraries. So we'll do pip install pandas selenium Jupyter lab and a library called webdriver manager. Okay, so now let's spin up Jupyter lab and start our project. 
Let's create a new notebook. Now let's import the libraries that we need. So Pandas, Time, Selenium, and we also import the Chrome Driver Manager. So before this Web Driver Manager package exists, we will have to manually download a binary of Chrome Driver, and save it in our laptop, and whenever the Chrome Driver change, we will have to update this uh, Chrome Driver, which is very, very boring. So let's run this. There's no module named Selenium. So you might encounter this same problem as well, and I think the problem is when we installed these packages, we got a notification that says our pip version is not yet updated. So we'll just go ahead and update our pip and now we will install again Selenium. Now let's launch Jupyter Lab again and see if this works. Yes, it works. Actually, I found a Selenium tutorial on Gigs for Gigs, so I will just copy some of the code here. So the driver is an object that we define here and it can manipulate our uh, our browser. So that is how Selenium works. So let's do that. You can see that a new browser window is open. Now we actually want to go to the Witcher Wiki website. So the way we do that is to define a page URL. So it is the character page that we saw earlier. So characters in the books. And we just copy this URL and paste it here. Now we can ask the driver to direct us to this page URL. So let's run this. Yeah, now you can see that we are in on this website. We have a little pop-up here for the, the user cookies. And when we have this pop-up, some of the elements on the page will be hidden. So we have to find a way to click on the accept button. If we go to Selenium documentation page and go to locating elements, you see that there's a method that allows us to select a button that has a certain text. So this is exactly what we need. I will just go ahead and copy this one to our uh, our notebook. And this element actually is a div, it is not a button, so we will change that. And we will change some text here to accept because this is the name of our button. So we will do a click on this button. Now you can see that the cookie pop-up is gone. So on this page, you can see that there are a couple of books here. And each of these different books have a, a set of characters. So if we click on, for example, Baptism of Fire Characters, we have a bunch of characters here. These are all the characters that appear in this book. So our task now is to go into each of these links and extract the character list for each of these books. It's actually quite simple. If we inspect this um, this page. Each of the links here has a link attribute, so the href, and a class attribute. On Selenium documentation, there's a method called find elements by class name. This is exactly what we need. We can copy this one. Um, we'll name this all book category. The class name here, we can just simply copy this, uh, this class. Let's see what book categories is. We only see one one category here. Oh, because we are just using find element instead of find elements. So we need to add an S here to uh, find multiple elements that have the same class. So if we go to the first element here and uh, see the text, yeah, you can see that this is exactly the the book name that we just saw earlier. So the first uh, the first book in the in the list. We can also get the link of this element by doing get attribute. We saw earlier that there's a href attribute because it's a link. So it is exactly the URL that we need to go into to be able to extract all the character list. Now, if we ask our driver to go into this URL. There's a list of all the characters here, and uh, what we will want to do is to inspect these name elements and see how we can how we can extract these elements on the web page. <coughs> we see that there's a class name here. In a very similar manner, we are going to do that. So we will name this character elements. And now we will just replace this class name. Oh, it's actually just the same. <laughs> So now we have a pretty good idea of all the elements that we need. So now I'll just go ahead and clean up the code and uh, create a for loop so that we can extract all the characters in all the books. And it's also very important to comment our code. So 
we'll say here create driver and here uh, we'll say go to the character in books page we'll do a little click here for the accept button click on accept one of the problems that we often face with Selenium Bot is that sometimes the, when the browser is opened, the web page is not yet rendered fully. So some of the elements are still invisible to the bot. So one of the easy solutions is just to ask the driver to wait for a few seconds before it starts finding an element. Here I just set a waiting time of three seconds. So this should work fine. And then we will find all the books that are on the page. Now let's create a loop to loop through all the book categories to get the URLs of all the books. Let's initiate an empty list for books. We will loop through each category in the book categories. And for each of the categories, we will say the book URL will define it as the href attributes of the category. And the book names is basically the, the text of the category. So that is exactly what we saw earlier, right? So here now we can append the, the new book elements to this book list. So we will say firstly the book name is equals to book name and the URL is just the book URL that we just defined here. And let's see what this books looks like. So here this is a list of uh, I think 12 books or so and this links can be used for the next step which is to uh, to go into each of these links and then we will extract the character names so we'll first initialize an empty list for the list of the characters and then for each book in this book list go into the book page so the book url and then we just need to extract the character name elements so find elements by class name we'll just save the information of the book uh, that is the book name and the character names in the character list. It will take probably a few seconds or a minute or so for this loop to run. And now we have it. If we just translate it into a pandas data frame to make it look a little bit nicer. Yeah, this is a little data frame that has all the characters for all of the 12 books in the Witcher book series. Now I'm also wondering which books have the most characters and which books have fewest characters. We can do that by making a little bar plot. So let me first save this uh, data frame to a character df data frame and then we can create a bar plot by the value counts of the books here apparently i haven't imported matplotlib so i'll just quickly do that in the notebook ah uh, plot is not defined apparently i have copied it somewhere and i forgot to copy the other one so we also need to import matplotpilot as well so yeah the Lady of the Lake, Time of Contempt, and the Tower of the Swallow are the three books that have the most characters. To follow along with this Witcher project where you learn about NLP and network analysis and visualization, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you won't miss the upcoming videos. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye! -bye.